In 2024, something happened in China that Western car companies have been desperately hoping we'd never find out about. A battery company just became a car company, and they quietly surpassed Tesla. I'll tell you exactly what they did in a minute, but first, understand this. The entire EV market as you know it is about to get flipped upside down. And the scariest part? The data shows that major US automakers might have known about this for years and chose not to tell us. Here's what nobody's talking about. November 2025. Buried in financial reports and industry announcements, something nobody in mainstream media picked up on, BYD, a Chinese battery company that started making phones in 1995, just produced its 10 millionth battery-powered vehicle. Let that sink in. 10 million. For context, Tesla, the company Elon Musk built from scratch starting in 2003, took from 2008 to 2020 to build their first million vehicles. That's 12 years. BYD did 10 million in half the time. But here's where it gets really interesting. At the same time they hit this milestone, BYD announced something called the Next Generation Blade Battery. And according to the announcement, it's designed to increase driving range and battery life cycle beyond what's currently on the market. Now, you're probably thinking, that sounds great, but is it really a threat? The answer is so much bigger than you think. BYD is already selling ultra-affordable EVs. Their Seagull compact car, launched in mid-2023, costs under $35,000 and gets up to 252 miles of range. And here's the kicker. It became China's top-selling vehicle in August 2024. Not just top EV, top vehicle, period. So what happens when they add the new Blade battery to cars that are already cheaper, more reliable, and apparently more popular than anything Tesla offers? That's when the Western auto industry panics. Here's what keeps executives at Ford, GM, and Volkswagen awake at night. BYD isn't just making EVs. They're making EVs that are cheaper than Tesla, by thousands, built with better battery technology, their own, backed by 30 years of battery manufacturing, not borrowed from Panasonic. And unlike every other EV maker, BYD owns the entire supply chain. That's not an advantage, that's a monopoly. Tesla buys batteries from other companies. Ford buys batteries from other companies. BMW buys batteries from other companies. BYD makes their own, and has done it since they were a phone battery supplier. The industry data shows that battery costs are 30 to 50% of an EV's total price. That means BYD has a structural cost advantage that competitors cannot overcome without completely restructuring their entire business model. And now they're about to get even more efficient. But here's the part that should scare you. America's automotive leadership has known about this for years and has done basically nothing to compete. In fact, they've done something worse. They've lobbied the US government to put tariffs on Chinese EVs to artificially protect themselves. So let me get this straight. Instead of innovating faster and cheaper, they asked the government to make Chinese cars more expensive so American cars look competitive by comparison. That's not business strategy, that's panic. And the evidence of that panic is everywhere if you know where to look. Here's what mainstream auto journalists won't tell you. The US and Europe have been enforcing protectionist policies specifically designed to keep BYD out of their markets. Tariffs on Chinese imports, local content requirements, trade barriers disguised as safety standards. Why? Because if BYD brought the Seagull to the United States right now, it would absolutely destroy American EV sales. A $25,000 EV with 250 plus miles of range? That's not a competitor. That's a market reset. And analysts already know this. One top industry analyst, Ed Kim from Auto Pacific, basically said it's inevitable. It's only a matter of time before BYD is selling retail passenger vehicles in the US market. American consumers want them and awareness of them is strong. Notice something? They're not saying maybe someday. They're saying it's only a matter of time. The data backs this up too. Gen Z and millennial consumers, the future of car buying, are already following BYD on social media. Awareness is spreading through grassroots channels that traditional automakers can't control. 
So the tariffs aren't protecting American workers. They're protecting American profit margins. They're protecting Ford's $40,000 Mustang Mach-E when BYD could offer the same range for $15,000. They're protecting General Motors' market dominance in a way that innovation won't. And the new Blade battery just made that protection a lot more necessary. Because now BYD didn't just win on price, they're winning on technology. So what makes the Blade battery different? The tech specs are impressive. Higher energy density, extended battery life cycle, and integration designs that reduce vehicle weight and manufacturing complexity. But the real advantage is something you don't see in tech specs. BYD has been perfecting battery manufacturing since before Tesla existed. They've made billions of batteries for phones, for tools, for storage systems. They didn't just jump into cars and hire Canasonic like everyone else. They brought 30 years of battery expertise into automotive. And that shows. The vehicles they've already sold are proving it. BYD is not just making EVs that work, they're making EVs that are more reliable and cheaper to maintain than Western competition. And that's before the new Blade battery. What happens when it rolls out? The range increases, the reliability increases, the cost, well, stays basically the same. Because BYD has supply chain advantages that Tesla, Ford, and GM simply cannot match without completely restructuring their entire business model, which they won't do because restructuring is expensive. So instead, well, they'll keep asking the government for tariffs, keep lobbying against Chinese imports, keep telling American consumers that BYD cars are unsafe, despite zero evidence. And meanwhile, 20 million Americans are going to search for BYD on YouTube next year because they heard from a friend that the Seagull is incredible. Here's the scenario analysts are quietly discussing in closed door meetings. 2026, BYD announces they're entering the US market. The government tries to block them. Congress holds hearings about national security. The media starts a smear campaign about batteries. 2027, BYD opens assembly plants in Mexico. They're technically a North American company now. Tariff walls start cracking. 2028, the first BYD vehicles hit American dealerships. Prices are $8,000 to $12,000 cheaper than Tesla. Range is comparable. Quality is proven. 2029. Ford and GM's EV divisions start hemorrhaging money. Tesla's market share collapses. 2030. BYD becomes the largest automaker in the world by market cap. Is this science fiction? No. The data literally shows this is already happening in China. BYD's dominance there is undisputed, and every analyst predicts the same trajectory globally. The only variable is how long can trade barriers delay it? Because they can't stop it. They can only delay it. And every quarter that passes, BYD gets stronger, more efficient, and more ambitious. The new Blade battery? That's them accelerating the timeline. So here's what you need to know. American automakers have known for years that BYD is better, cheaper, more reliable, more ambitious. And instead of competing, they've lobbied the government to keep them out. Instead of innovating faster, they've asked for protection. Instead of telling you the truth, they've stayed quiet. And now with the new Blade battery technology, BYD just raised the bar so high that Western EVs are going to look expensive and outdated by comparison. The only question is, how long until American consumers figure it out? Because when they do, everything changes. The EV revolution wasn't won by Tesla's innovation or Elon Musk's vision. It's going to be won by a Chinese battery company that nobody in America has ever heard of. And the people who could have warned you, they chose tariffs instead. What do you think happens next? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to see this story unfold in real time, subscribe, because 2026 is when this gets very interesting.